In this video, we'll be walking through the steps of insertion sort. Insertion sort works by sorting one item at a time, starting from the front and working its way to the back. In other words, it starts by sorting the first item, then the first two items, then the first three items, and so on, until the entire array is sorted. Let's start with a quick animation to get a big picture idea. Let's say this is the array that we need to sort. Insertion sort starts with the second item in the array, since the first item by itself is already sorted. We then keep moving this item to the left, as long as its value is smaller than the one before it. 2 is less than 5, so we move it to the left, and now the first two items in the array are sorted. Now we move on to the third item. 4 is less than 5, so we move it to the left. But 4 is not less than 2, so now we stop and 4 is in the correct position. Now the first three items in the array are sorted, and we can move on to the fourth item. 6 is not less than 5, which means it's already in the correct place, and we don't need to move it. You can see that what's really going on here is that since we know all the items before the current one are sorted, all we need to do is just insert the current item in the correct place of the sorted portion and move on. Once we do that for each item in the array, the entire array is sorted. Now in this example, I had the array elements swapping places as I moved it around, but there's actually a more efficient way to do this without having to swap. So now let's look at how this is implemented in practice using Python code. So on the right is a very common implementation of insertion sort. We start by entering a loop that starts at index i equals 1. This will be the loop that keeps track of the current item and will iterate for each item in the array. The next line explicitly takes the value of the current item and names it key. We'll keep track of the value of key up here. We then create another loop variable, j, that we set to i minus 1. This will be the variable that will traverse backwards in the list to find the correct spot for key to be inserted. It's important to note here that although I'm pointing i and j to the array, they refer to the array indices, not the values themselves. We then enter a while loop that tests two things before entering. First, if j is greater than or equal to 0, which will prevent us from going out of bounds when moving backwards in the array. Second, if the key is less than the jth item in the array. If this is true, like in this case, 2 is less than 5, that means that the key is not in the correct place, so we enter the loop. The next step is to set the j plus 1th item in the array equal to the jth item like this. What this is effectively doing is moving up the jth item by 1. Don't worry about the duplicates that you see here because we're about to fix that. Then we decrement j by 1 so that now j equals negative 1. We return to the top of the loop, but thankfully because we checked that j must be greater than or equal to 0, we exit the loop and never try to access anything out of bounds. We then set the j plus 1th item equal to key. So set the item at index 0 equal to 2, and the first iteration is done. The first two items are sorted, and we've moved the 2 to the beginning of the array. Let's move on to the third item in the array, so i equals 2. Key is now 4, and we set our j variable to the one before i. 4 is less than 5, so let's enter the while loop. We'll set the j plus 1th item equal to the jth item, just like this, and decrement j. When we return to the top of the loop, we find that 4 is not less than 2, so we're done. We exit the loop and set the j plus 1th item equal to key. The first three items are now sorted. Now this next iteration is kind of a special case. Let's increment i, take the key, and set j equal to i minus 1. When we test our loop condition, we see that 6 is not less than 5. In other words, the key doesn't have to be moved. We skip the loop entirely and just overwrite the key, 6, with itself. This is an important point about insertion sort. When the key was already in the correct position, we were able to skip the inner loop entirely and just move on to the next item. We're going to come back to this point later in the big O analysis. Now on to the next iteration. You can intuitively tell that 1 should be at the start of the array, so I'm going to speed this up a little. First 1 will be compared to 6 then 5, then 4, then 2. At this point, j is out of bounds, 
so we stop and set the first item equal to 1. We're now at the last iteration, and it's really the same idea. You can see that by using this implementation of insertion sort, we don't write the key to the array until it's in the correct position in the sorted portion. So it's more efficient than swapping, where you'd have to write and erase the key over and over again. Now the entire array is sorted, and we are done. Now let's look at the big O analysis of insertion sort. First, let's look at the best case. Let's see what happens when we run insertion sort on an array that's already sorted. So first, we'll initialize the i and j variables and compare key to the item before it. Well, 2 is not less than 1, so we just overwrite 2 with 2 and move on. Next, we ask if 3 is less than 2. That's false, so again we skip the loop and move on. You can see a pattern starting to form here. If the array is already sorted, the inner loop never executes and we only iterate through the array once. This leads us to a really important point. On an array that's already sorted, insertion sort runs in O of n time, which is better than any other sorting algorithm. So if you know that an array is likely to be already sorted or nearly sorted, insertion sort is the best choice. Now let's look at the worst case scenario. What happens if the array is reverse sorted? Here, we start with 5 and compare it with 6. 5 is less than 6, so we execute the while loop once and move 5. Next we look at 4. 4 is less than both 5 and 6, so the while loop executes twice to move 4 to the very beginning. Next we look at 3, which is again less than all the items before it, so the while loop executes 3 times to move 3 to the very beginning. At the very end, the last item has to traverse the entire array. If the length of the array is n, then the last iteration takes n minus 1 steps. So how many times did we have to traverse the array? Well, for the second item, we only had to move it one step back. For the third item, it was two steps. For the fourth item, it was three steps, and so on, until for the last item, the nth item, we had to move it n minus 1 steps all the way to the front of the array. So to count the total number of steps, we have to add 1, plus 2, plus 3, and so forth, all the way up to n minus 1. We can use this formula here that tells us that the sum from 1 to n is n times n plus 1 over 2, or n squared plus n over 2. So to find the sum to n minus 1, let's take n squared plus n over 2 and just subtract n from it. After a bit of manipulation, we can see that this ends up being n squared minus n over 2. And since with big O notation, we only take the dominant term and drop constants, this ends up being O of n squared. So when the array is reverse sorted, insertion sort is actually one of the worst performing algorithms and should not be used.